Hello, I'm Jane Goodall. I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. We've talked about bonobos before, but we haven't really covered the pan troglodytes or the common chimpanzees. And who better to help us than Jane freaking Goodall? Chimpanzees and bonobos are the only living members of the pan genus, and they're incredibly similar to humans. Genetically, humans, chimpanzees, bonobos were sort of equidistant. They're about one and a half percent genetically different from us, and we are from the bonobo. A thing we all have in common is amazing intelligence, and a big part of that is communication. Chimpanzees have many different calls that they used to communicate and there's the distance greeting which announces who I am and is listening to see who's out there. We call it the pantoot. There's the close-up greeting. There's oh, oh, means go away and there's laughing when you're being tickled in the neck. <laughs> yeah, like that. But unlike bonobos, who rarely show aggression and instead just have a lot of sex, chimpanzees can be incredibly violent. They have a territory and they patrol this territory and they protect it, the males, for their females and offspring. And they will try to enlarge their territory at the expense of a weaker neighbor. And this is when we see really, really brutal, almost warfare. It's like gang warfare. The reason for their different outlooks on life is simply because they are very different species. Chimpanzees happen to be more aggressive. There are occasions when bonobos, particularly in captivity, can be extremely aggressive. But that's not talked about. But it's not only their vocal communication that is similar to us. They also make heavy use of body language. Chimpanzees are so like us in so many ways. I mean, when they greet, they kiss, embrace, hold hands, pat one another. If they're being aggressive, they shake their fist, they throw rocks. They use various objects as tools. They have a very complex social structure, and there is even a male dominance hierarchy which isn't that dissimilar to human societal male dominance. There are alliances. They've been described as very political. Uh, just like us. The care of a mother for her family is very moving. It's a very long childhood in chimpanzee society as in ours and it seems that that's important because like us chimpanzee children have a lot to learn and they learn by observing and imitating. So that if we accept as one definition of human culture behavior passed from one generation to the next through observational learning, then chimpanzees have their own primitive cultures. Part of this passed down learning is tool use. And recent discoveries by archaeologists have found that chimpanzees have entered the Stone Age. In West Africa, archaeologists have found stone tools dating back well over 4,000 years that were wielded by chimpanzees. Chimps and humans aren't alone in their tool use. We've seen tool use in birds, octopuses, insects. But what is particularly interesting is that they don't often use stones as tools, as they're harder to find in their environment than, say, plants. The chimpanzees of West Africa have passed down their stone-based technology for many generations, which they use for cracking open nuts. We've learned that the line between us and the other animals is not a sharp line as once was supposed. I was told when I finally got to Cambridge University, the difference between us and other animals was a difference of kind. It's actually a difference of degree. Because of this, there are groups of people fighting to get legal rights for chimpanzees. But it's not an easy battle. The problem is that this is, is very challenging to some people who want to cling to the fact that only humans can be persons. They're more like us than anything else. They deserve to be treated with respect. And that's if we just treat them with respect and apply the golden rule, do unto them as you would have them do unto us. As recently as July, a New York judge has said that chimps may get legal rights in the future, but not anytime soon. I think a, a really important thing we've learned is what makes us different. We've developed 
As far as we know, the only species on the planet a way of communicating with words. And so this, I believe, is a major factor leading to the explosive development of our intellect. Also, while chimps don't use words, there is some evidence to suggest that they have accents, which they use to more easily communicate with members of other troops. Chimpanzees, other animals, are way more intelligent than people used to think. But even the brightest chimpanzee pales when you compare that brain with the brain of a human who designs a rocket that goes up to Mars and out of that crawls a robot and it's still creeping about on the surface of the red planet taking photos. And it leads to the big question. We have to admit, I think, we're the most intellectual creature to ever walk this planet. So how come we're destroying our only home? Thanks so much, Dr. Goodall, for being on our show. You've been one of my heroes since childhood and continue to inspire me today. When you've finished watching this video, you should go and check out her awesome initiative called Roots and Shoots. Also, I'm going to post the full interview with Jane Goodall as a separate video, so make sure to check that out as well. So, as usual, what animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thank you all very much for watching.